Hey, it's me, your brain. We've been through a lot together, huh? I know it seems like it's been forever, but for some of you watching, I may not even be done growing yet. In fact, I won't be fully developed until we're 25 years old. And since I'm still growing, everything that I feel and think is just more intense than it would be if I were a fully developed brain. The highs are higher and the lows are lower. That means that I'm especially prone to getting hurt when under the influence of drugs. Yes, even and weed. Our brains are like Gordon Ramsay. Wait, wait, let me explain. Like Gordon making a fine soup that brings tears to his eyes, our brains constantly produce a precise balance of chemicals that control all of the brain processes. These chemicals are called neurotransmitters, and a constant production of them is the key to keeping the brain running steady. And many drugs unnaturally block our ability to produce dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. The neurotransmitters that control our happiness and pleasure. Drugs can also permanently change the prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain that helps us to think ahead, make smart decisions, interact with others in healthy ways, and control ourselves. With the repeated use of drugs, this part of the brain may fail to develop properly. Other areas that can experience a loss of ability due to drug use are impulse control, emotional development, and memory. Wait, is it, is it memory? This damage could lead to lower IQs, loss of coordination, and difficulty problem solving. It also affects mental health. Young people who use drugs are more likely to have anxiety disorders, mood disorders such as depression, and psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. The most important thing to remember about drug and alcohol use is how it affects you when you are not under the influence. There are three main categories of drugs, stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens. And the after effects of each one are different. Stimulants increase dopamine, which makes you feel happy, and norepinephrine, which causes you to feel alert. Therefore, using stimulants limits your brain's ability to feel good and awake naturally. Depressants increase gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA. These cause you to feel calm and allow you to get a good night's sleep. But once addicted, you might feel anxious and have trouble sleeping on your own. And hallucinogens affect the brain's perception of reality, leading to delusional thoughts, as well as seeing, hearing, feeling, and tasting things that aren't really there. In order to not feel terrible, each drug requires more and more until your sober body can't feel good without substances. You might focus on the physical effects of drugs and alcohol, but what might be even more important is how drugs affect your mental health. Mental health challenges and substance use are often found together. They are called co-occurring disorders or a dual diagnosis. In fact, around half of the people who have an addiction issue also have a mental health condition. And sometimes folks use it to cope with their mental health, and sometimes substances actually cause mental health conditions. It's a real chicken or the egg situation. But what matters is that you often can't address one without addressing the other, because your mental health is just as impacted as your physical health when it comes to substance use. The first rule of digging a hole for yourself is that if you want to get out of the hole, you need to stop digging. When you stop your drug or alcohol use, you allow your body and your brain the ability to course correct, which can take from six to 12 weeks. But this also depends on what substances you use, how much, and for how long. Oftentimes, even if you physically detox, you're still left with patterns of thinking that caused you to use in the first place. And that stuff doesn't just go away by leaving it alone. It takes work, like with a licensed therapist, to help you address the underlying why behind your substance use. You need to get help for substance use. Talk to someone, anyone, because your life, it really matters. And if you need a place to start, visit sandstonecare.com or call the number linked up in the description box below. We'll get to know you and your situation and connect you with the support that you need, even if it's not with us. Change is possible and Sandstone Care is here to help.